Hello everyone, welcome to the 13th of a series of guides for each world in Kingdom Hearts 1. This guide will be going over the storyline path for each world in this episode part 2 of the first visit to Hollow Bastion. This part will be covering everything from the Maleficent, or sorry, Dragon Maleficent fight onward to the end of the world visit. If you missed the first part, I'll leave a link in the description as well as the pinned comment down below. Picking up where we left off, before going through the Dark Portal in front, feel free to equip any fire resistance gear that you have available. This isn't necessary, but you, you can make the fight easier as you'll be taking less damage from her fire-based attacks. Go through the Dark Portal in front, and then you can skip or watch the cutscene that plays, and then you'll be fighting Dragon Maleficent. This fight is going to be hard for most people, so I'm going to try to run through a bit more in-depth than usual. She has a Claw Slash attack in front of her, where her Claw will glow with purple energy before she swipes at you. This can be blocked with guard or dodged. She has a bite attack where she'll bite in the location repeatedly rapidly. Not a whole lot of tell on this attack and while it can be guarded I think it's easiest to just get out of the way once she starts using this. She has a spin attack which she'll have a tell by making a kind of roaring gesture over a few seconds at which point she'll jump in the air trying to hit you with her tail and create a shockwave when she lands. Stay back and try to dodge the tail swipe. As a dragon, she has a fire breath attack which leaves a pool of fire on the ground. You don't want to be in front of her around the time that she's casting this. She has a shockwave attack where she'll alternate between slamming down her two front legs as she turns to face towards you. You want to jump or use the glide ability to stay above these slams. She'll continue this attack until she is facing your position again. You can use this as a way to turn her away from the fire she puts on the ground. Her final attack is where she will spawn 8 fireballs in the air around her. These will activate over time spiraling and tracking towards the player. These can be dodged around causing them to hit the floor instead, though they will try to track you. Here's my recommendation for making this fight as painless as possible while you're using a normal build focused on melee. Upon entering the fight, summon Tinkerbell. She is extremely powerful, providing you with same providing you with some passive health regeneration over time, permanently for the whole fight as long as you don't die. If you do die though, she'll revive you once, giving you a second life in the fight and disappearing. If she goes for her claw attack or bite attack, dodge roll or guard against these. Guarding will be more difficult, I recommend just dodging. If she uses her fire breath, leave and rotate her away from it during her shockwave slam attack. If she goes for a tail swipe, try to move away to be safe from getting knocked into any of the flames she might have on the ground, and away from the shockwave she creates when she lands. Sometimes you are going to get caught in the middle of the fire breath area. If, if this ever happens, make sure to use the glide ability to safely get out of there. Trying to walk through the flames will like, likely kill you, so this is the safer way of doing that. This is also an easier way of avoiding her ground slams as well. Outside of that, heal when you need to, cast arrow on yourself for extra defense if you want to feel safer, or use stop, which she is actually affected by, to help get more damage windows in. There isn't a whole lot of windows to hit her safely for long periods of time, so you'll likely find yourself trading damage a lot throughout the fight. If you ever need a breather, you can jump on the vines around the area. Even the lowest vine down here is a safe spot from every single one of her attacks other than the flaming orbs that she spawns in the air. Hopefully this helps you enough to be able to defeat her. After the fight, you'll get Fire Glow, a gem for summoning Mushu. Go back out into the hallway and feel free to save before going through the new door that appeared to the lift stop. Go across the hallway here into the Grand Hall and walk forward to open the door, then head up top to another cutscene and another fight this time with the corrupted version of Riku. Hey look, this is a never not easy fight. Note that you're all alone in this fight, so no summoning Tinkerbell here to help you out. So Riku has quite a lot of attacks, so I'll try to explain them here. His first initial phase will be very similar to when you fought him at the start of Hollow Bastion. Vertical forward slam that leaves a tiny impact. A dash forward to slice through you. He'll also sometimes stand still while doing a rotating swing with his Keyblade. This comes out very quickly and is kind of hard to get out of the way of. He also will be automatically dodging out of the way of some of your attacks, which he normally follows up with his vertical forward slam after doing this. 
I think his most open attack spread this fight is that vertical slam, as well as the rotating swing of his Keyblade. But he's only open kind of immediately after casting these, otherwise he's probably not going to be staggerable. The vertical forward slam is the easiest one to abuse though, and get damage off of, as you can kind of dodge roll to the side. And later you also kind of have the option of dodging behind, though it's a little bit more dangerous as we'll see in a little bit. These are the trade windows where he's easiest to stagger though, and get at least a combo in, maybe two. After you deal a bit of damage to him, he'll start to periodically buff himself. This will be shown through a tell where he starts to charge his hand with dark energy. And he has a few different voice lines when doing this. Welcome Oblivion, and now witness true power. You can hit him while he is doing this. This basically upgrades almost all of the abilities we already talked about before. His forward vertical slash will now shoot out an energy beam to the left and right upon landing. His forward dash will now shoot a dark energy beam out in front of him. Eventually he will exit this phase with a new attack where he slams his keyblade into the ground from above, spawning a bunch of pillars from the ground. Try to dodge these. Remember that if you have Belief Bracer as an ability, that always also can give you immunity for a second while healing you by casting Cure in case you need it. From here until he gets on low health, this will be the combat loop you're kind of dealing with. He'll be transferring in and out of this empowered stage and his normal stage, kind of going back and forth between the two. And once he's on low health, he'll buff into the empowered stage for the rest of the fight, gaining one final attack, which is definitely the most dangerous one. He'll call out Behold the Power of Darkness or Open Your Heart to Darkness and race around the arena for multiple dashing strikes. Only the first rush is aimed at you, so this is the one that you want to make sure you dodge to not get caught in the other ones as easily. It's easiest to avoid the remaining dodges after that by hiding in a corner of the arena. Riku will finish this attack off by slamming the ground in a similar fashion to his earlier ability, but the pillars that spawn are much larger and cover a large portion of the arena. You can technically not get hit by this at all, as you can see here, I managed to pull it off during my fight. But I haven't found a pattern that's predictable to know whether you're, where you're standing is going to be safe or not. So I would just say, try your best to be in a safe area, but just be ready to have enough health to take that attack, and then heal following it. That's this fight, remember that you're mostly looking here to abuse his staggerable time, so that is during that, you know, the swing of his keyblade around in a circle, but that one's a little bit harder to do. The one that you kind of want to look for is the vertical slash mostly, that's the one that I find has the biggest stagger chance and window that he's open. As per usual, use cure when you need it, and feel free to use arrow to help reduce damage, as well as using any items as a backup if you do need them. After the fight, skip or watch the cutscenes and you'll learn Ragnarok as an ability. You'll now be a Shadow Heartless and will have to follow your friends back to the main lobby of Hall of Ashton. Go out the main door to the lift stop. Jump down here and go through the door to the high tower. This is going to sound a little bit crazy, but literally just jump off the edge of the map and then jump off the edge of the map again and then go down and through this door back to the lift stop and finally through the door across to the entrance hall. Dialogue cutscene and you've arrived at your friend's location, walk up to them and Donald would berate you for being a Heartless. Would have been interesting to see what happened if he just fundagas us instead, not knowing it was us. <laughs> anyway, skip or watch this cutscene and you'll be in a new cutscene in Traverse Town. Now I know I said in the last video I would cover the visit for Traverse Town in this video as well, but I was not expecting to end up having to talk about the two boss fights for as long as I did. So I'll be covering the last visit to Traverse Town in the next video combined with the second visit to Hall of Bastion, as that video should be shorter than this one anyways, as there's not too much to do in either world. I hope this guide was useful to help you get through those fights, and that these guides help anyone that gets stuck on where to go, or trying to get the achievements. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one.